So without further ado, let's get started with Chris Carmody and the Zoom and hybrid meeting guidelines. And this is only going to go about 10 minutes. There probably will be unanswered questions at the end. So if each speaker could please um, state at the end of your session um, how people should get in touch with you if they have additional comments and questions. Chris Carmody, take it away. Hi, good morning. My name is Chris Carmody. I'm the administrative manager in the town manager's office. Um, I uh, wear uh, many hats. Uh, one of them is uh, scheduling uh, Stephen's time. Um, I am also the town's, um, you might call it a dedicated Zoom uh, manager. So there's, um, as you know, a lot of different aspects to Zoom. Today, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, presenting on a hybrid meeting and uh, we're going to do a little bit of review. So let me pull up my slides. <clears throat> okay. Can everyone see the slides? Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, so just by way of review, um, Governor Baker uh, issued an order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. That's MGL 30A section 20. And there are a lot of things that that uh, order did uh, in 2020, but really the two most important parts for purposes of our conversation today um, are that uh, it suspended the requirement the public bodies meet in the public place provided, provided the public access to the body's deliberations is available through adequate alternative means. Also, it suspended the requirement that a quorum, as you all know by now, be physically present. Uh, the town issued a series of policy directives starting in April 1, 2020, for remote meeting of public bodies, and subsequently provided an update on May 7, 2020, and uh, the most recent one was on September 8, 2021, each of which was uh, presented to the select board um, on or about the date of its issuance. As we all know, the governor rescinded the emergency order in June 2021 and signed into law an act extending certain COVID-19 measures. Um, with that act primarily uh, uh, continued the suspensions described uh, above. Um, the bodies may be remotely and uh, quorum need not be physically present. The Mass, Att uh, Mass Attorney General um, has extensive provided extensive uh, advice about this on their website uh, and issued guidance on June 16, 2021. Um, I uh, will let my um, colleague in the town clerk's office uh, talk more about posting of agendas, but just by way of a very quick reminder, it's 48 hours in advance. Um, you have to account for holidays and weekends. And the OML uh, provisions, the new law uh, uh, does not change the requirement that uh, each committee create accurate minutes um, and uh, it must state whether the meeting is going to be met in person, remote, or hybrid. The uh, Attorney General has clarified what adequate alternative means uh, means, uh, which includes, which is, this is not an exhaustive list, uh, provide live access through Zoom, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and live TV, uh, including local cable access, which the town uh, does. So the, the hybrid meeting guidelines, um, right now, we uh, over the last few months, the town has really expanded its capability to meet uh, in hybrid, uh, which is combining in-person and Zoom meetings. Uh, at the same time, there are still some Zoom Kind of guidelines that are still in effect, uh, which is that the chair is responsible uh, for determining the meeting location uh, and posting the agenda. Uh, the chair is also responsible for um, determining uh, the uh, way that the, the committee meets, whether it's exclusively over Zoom or exclusively in person or hybrid. Um, the, uh, mass uh, the attorney general's guidance is also very clear that the committee may 
uh, decide to meet in person uh, exclusively and require remote public participation. Uh, the chair is responsible for ensuring that each um, remote uh, committee member's name is announced. Uh, sometimes they allow that to do uh, that each committee member to do that themselves. All votes must be taken by roll call. And all committee members must be clearly audible, not necessarily visible to each other and members of the public. Uh, just by way of review, the, the open meeting law does not require that public bodies allow public comment or public participation during meetings. To the contrary, the, the open meeting law specifies that nobody shall address the public body without permission of the chair. In terms of protocol and conduct, um, the chair is responsible for obtaining a Zoom uh, link, uh, which include uh, the unique meeting ID and passcode. Um, also, the, uh, for determining whether they, the committee meets in person or hybrid or uh, over Zoom. Uh, this, the meeting will get recorded on Zoom. It's sent to town staff. Staff send that to Minuteman Media, where they edit and publish the meeting on the town's YouTube site. Certain uh, executive committees, like the select board, school committee, finance committee, and planning board are live broadcast upon the uh, request of the chair. And for anyone who has trouble accessing the meeting, sometimes there has been some technical um, uh, challenges uh, where the Zoom link may have gotten caught in the town's spam filter. Um, so the, the hyperlink, especially in this day and age, the hyperlink is a little bit of a, of a trigger for di different software. Sometimes if you uh, convert the word into Adobe, it's, uh, it interferes with the Zoom uh, with the link itself. So for anyone who's having trouble accessing the meeting, a surefire way to access the meeting is just to go to zoom.com and enter in manually the meeting ID and passcode. Uh, just by way of review, in terms of conduct, um, the expectations have been pretty clear um, uh, since we started a meeting on Zoom in March 2020. Um, that uh, each member should try to find a quiet place with power and internet to attend the virtual meeting. Uh, you want to try and test your speakers and microphone before the meeting starts. Uh, test speaker and mic on your Zoom program. Uh, committee members should activate their camera. Uh, members of the public are encouraged to activate their camera when they're recognized by the chair. Um, and then in terms of uh, specific conduct and, uh, and in adherence with the town's uh, policy directive issued on September 8th, 2021. Um, each uh, committee member is, and member of the public is expected to adhere to a standard of respect and courtesy towards other committee members and town staff. Uh, for hybrid meeting locations right now, we've got four. Um, we have the townhouse, the public hearing room. We've got 55 Church Street in the basement. We have the first floor of the conference room in the planning department at 141 Kyes Road. And we have the public meeting room in the municipal light plant. And our thanks go out to the IT department for working so hard and quickly to scale up uh, the capability. Uh, these are really the only places right now that uh, have uh, the power, the acoustic uh, uh, conditions, uh, and the meeting space that allow for a hybrid meeting to occur. So there have been uh, times where we've seen a hybrid in, outside of these locations and it just does not serve the public well. Um, there's either audio connection problems or power connection problems that inter interfere with the process of the meeting. And so we, um, for uh, chairs that are interested in having a hybrid meeting, uh, that that uh, goes through the town manager's office and we are involved in helping to schedule the room and kind of making sure that the Zoom meeting lines up with the physical space requirements. Um, just, we will be posting this slide deck uh, later today on the website. So people have all this information and the contact information for the schedulers of these sites. So that's it, any questions? Okay, uh, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, we have over 60 people participating, so we may not get to all the questions. Um, 
if you have a question, please uh, raise your hand clearly. Um, I see Stephen Crane wants to ask a question, probably not, probably add a few words. And then our first question looks like it's from Carlin Reed. Go ahead, Stephen. <clears throat> Yeah, I think, good morning, everyone. And I just want to add, and I think Chris touched on it, but I think it's important to, to remember that, um, you know, the town is currently under, <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, mask advisory. And so for the people who are meeting in person um, in, a, in a hybrid meeting model, model or an in-person meeting model, um, you know, the, it's not a requirement to have masks in the spaces, it is a, an advisory. So each, each chair, when contemplating how to call a meeting should, um, be aware of the current Board of Health orders on mask wearing. Uh, you know, I think if you're able to, <clears throat> excuse me, use a, a larger room, I don't think there's anything wrong with spreading out uh, so long as the, you know, camera and the audio work uh, and, and meeting without masks. Um, I think I've seen committees do it both ways and it can be effective either way. The important thing is to protect each other's health and safety, but um, just be mindful of what the mask uh, advisories or orders are when you're scheduling that. Thank you, Stephen. That's an important reminder. Okay, our first question is from Carlin Reed, and I'm going to ask questioners to be brief. Um, if you have a question after Carlin, please raise your virtual or physical hand. Go ahead, Carlin. Thank you, Terry. Carlin Reed, Chair of the Peg Access. As you probably know, I'm all about video. I've been getting some complaints from folks about uh, committees not sending their videos promptly to MMN. So I'm reminding you, please uh, record your videos and send it promptly to MMN because people are actually watching what you do. And thank you again for doing good jobs on the videos. That's it. Thanks, Carlin, that's true. Um, I've recently been out of town, so it's really been great to have the videos. Um, and I know a lot of people watch them. Thank you so much. Linda Escobedo and Chris Reynolds. Yeah, thank you, Terry. Um, I, I just want to, even though the OML uh, technically does not require public comment, I just want to note that, you know, it's considered best practice that committees allow for public uh, comment. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Linda. And we have Chris Reynolds and then Diane Proctor. Thanks, Terry. So I just had a question if, if perhaps others have some advice, but um, any advice on hearings? So we did uh, public hearings last year completely over Zoom. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Uh, we have an important hearing coming up that the FinCom will run mid-December for a special town meeting. And I was just curious if you, Terry, or Chris Carmody or others have some advice around if we wanted to run that hearing either, I guess, in hybrid or in person. You mean Maybe, advice as to which way to run it? Hybrid? Yeah, or a suggestion, right? You know, do we, mm -hmm. is it going to run better one way or another? Um, mm -hmm. We had mixed results last year on hearing. So I was just curious if anybody had any advice for me on that. Chris? Sorry, if I, uh, uh, sorry I was. Oh, Steve. Well, go, go ahead, Chris. Uh, Chris is really the master of all this. And he's done, when he gave, when he, you know, started with the governor's order back in March. None of this capacity existed in the town of Concord, and now we're doing it every day. So I do want to give credit to Jeremy and Chris for really, and Jason Bulger as well for really making this happen. But um, I have my thoughts on on this. But Chris, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess there's um, a few things I would recommend. One is to talk with for chairs to talk with your committee members and see what they're hearing and what they prefer. The second is uh, with Zoom, as we all know, there are two different platforms. There's a Zoom meeting and a Zoom webinar. And the Zoom webinar, uh, we have received uh, candidly uh, complaints that meeting attendees cannot see each other unless they're on the panel. Um, and that uh, has been a little bit of a source of frustration uh, for, for, for attendees. Um, I will say that um, the town uh, for the last two town meetings has run public hearings for town meeting on the webinar and they have been successful. So I think that just like going to your doctor when they say, when you ask them, is there anything wrong? And, you, and they say, no, that's kind of the standard we're looking at with the webinar. Where did we see progressive dialogue? Did we see actions taken to the public? Was there a concerted effort for the public to, to weigh in on an issue. 
and was the meeting uh, Zoom bomb? So that's been, I think there's been a little bit of um, discussion about um, how quickly it is to remove a Zoom bomber and how slight an interference is on that meeting. And I, I would beg to differ with that assessment. I, what we do in the town manager's office is try to uh, create the conditions for progressive open dialogue. And when someone Zoom bombs at an event, they are not, it's not just a, a security incident. It is an intrusion on the, the public deliberation of, of the matter at hand. And it really, it just sets, sets thing, things back. So when chairs decide uh, whether to do a webinar or a meeting, they aren't just talking about the security incident. They are talking about what sort of risks are there and how do they try to protect um, the meeting so that they, the, the, dialogue, the dialogue can happen. Also, uh, Chris, uh, just to the third point, um, and that's an excellent point, is that um, public hearings are um, carved out in open meeting law and they are um, the, the requirements for a public hearing are different than a public meeting. Um, and I unfortunately am not uh, an expert on the public hearing uh, technical require, legal technical requirements um, that are governed by the attorney general and perhaps um, Kari may have some more guidance um, right. on that. Right. But, um, but okay. there, are, there are kind of commitments uh, to ensure during a public hearing that the public is heard. Right, thank you very much, Chris. We will be hearing more from Kari in a couple of minutes. I see there's two more questions, if you could be very brief. And then if you have more questions after that, please get in touch with Chris. Chris will be publishing all his slides also on the website. Uh, so our last two questions, uh, Diane Proctor, did you have a brief question? I actually didn't. It was an applause sign for Linda's um, of participation and asking the citizens to participate. So, all right, so so sure. thank, thank you. you. And then I see Molly Aline has a question. Um, I, I'm asking in the spirit of inclusion, there seems to be a lot of inside speak and acronyms being thrown around. Not all of us are members of government and know what these things mean. And so if you guys could, could either like say the full name of the organization or the group that, that you're referring to. So us non insiders know what, what's happening. That would be really great. Thank you, Molly. And that's a great segue. Uh, there's an acronym OML, which means open meeting law. And there